I'm Elise Bowman. I'm the voice of Pan on Dragon Ball GT, and I am with Anthony Bowling. Hello, I am Anthony Bowling, voice actor and director. Yes, there. and you have so many great characters. I do. Give you a couple of them? Yeah, just, just a couple, a couple to start the show. All right. Well, let me just say one that a lot of fans I know enjoy is uh, Alciel, the demon general from The Devil's a Part-Timer, mm -hmm. who would probably be very fussy right now and say, I can't believe you're spending so much money on watching these videos. <laughs> Don't listen to it. No, I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Oh, no, but he would say that. Would I wouldn't say, say that. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, never listen to the character. Oh, yeah, yeah don't yeah, listen yeah. to the character. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why are you wasting so much money? But I would say, no, absolutely, you should be doing this. Because I'm on. <laughs> yes. Elise is on. We're on. Yes. Uh, also, uh, right now in My Hero Academia, mm -hmm. I play uh, Chronostasis, one of the villains. You know, so I work under uh, lead guy Overhaul. Yeah. And he's kind of the uh, the Jersey Shore guy. He's always he's the goon. He's the brute. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, you do that. I love that. And this is Anime <laughs> Adventures, the show where I bring you anime voice actors. So stay tuned. And Anthony and I are going to have a little chat. My Hero Con. Yes. What a great weekend. Day two. Day, oh, it is day two. It is day two. It's my day one, so I got confused for a moment, but what <laughs> yeah. fun, I know. <laughs> yeah, you were like, what's going on? What What's day happening? is it? What are you talking about? <laughs> but it's been all things My Hero. Yes. What's your favorite thing about My Hero and your favorite thing about your character? Uh, what was really interesting is that I auditioned. Actually, I missed my first audition for this show. How? How did you miss this? Well, so I, I've done, I've played actually a couple characters on My Hero. I played this other character, Rin, who's in class 1B. We're racing each other, but we can team up for now. Let's carve a path. Uh, and they kind of show 1B a little bit, like, but it's all about 1A. That's right. all the characters. So he came in and he was with the other class and was like, here's my power. And then he was gone. Uh, and then apparently they sent out an email to an old email address that I had. So Colleen uh, Clinkenbeard, who directs yes, the show, of course. Yeah. Uh, there were a few characters that came in and I did not get it for a month and a half until oh, I checked no. it. And I was like, Colleen, I'm so sorry. It's not that I was trying to hide from you or that I blew you off. And she was like, oh no. She goes, give me your good email. And I was like, yeah, because... <laughs> Because so I missed these other characters, but then luckily with my new email, she said, I want you to read for um, this character Overhaul, which is the main bad guy who actually my character Chrono ends up working for Overhaul. Mm -hmm. But they're like, try this one, try some of these. And when I auditioned, she said, the voice you have is going to fit perfect for this other character. Uh, so it, okay. it worked out wonderfully. Which is good. Which it is great. Gone Could have gone very bad. Yes. And what was really nice is that I hadn't watched My Hero. What? I was, cause, oh, okay. Because, you know, when, uh, right now I'm, I'm directing, so I have to watch my shows. I have to watch a lot of anime. and it's. I like, hear that helps when you're directing. A, a little <laughs> bit. And the last thing I want to do when I go home is watch anime because I've been watching it all day and okay. directing it. So I'm like, I just want to go home and sleep or play video games or make dinner or something. Like, I don't want to watch anime. Mm. But I decided I want to watch some of My Hero because apparently it's a huge show. I, I got cash. He told me, you're going to come in for this. And I said, I'm going to watch it to kind of get what this is about. Mm -hmm. And I had forgotten that, uh, you know, I grew up watching Dragon Ball. That was it. Like, you hear that from everyone. Yes. And I was I was in high school and, yeah, watching that and watching, you know, from we started on Z, we watched GT and did all that. So it's really cool to be, like, amongst these people where it's like, yeah, I know who you are. I know who that person is. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Um, but I didn't think I'd like my hero. I don't know for what reason. Just, I'll watch it. And I was like, oh, it's got that storyline and these rich characters and it's superheroes and I love superheroes. So I was like, so as I was watching it, my wife is sitting on the couch and she's typing and she's working and slowly I hear her typing slow down and then her and I are just watching it on merit. We're marathoning it. And I was really? like, oh, this is a really good show. So that was kind of my experience where it was, I didn't doubt it, but it's just, I didn't know anything. So now I'm like super into it. I watch it every week when it comes out. Like, I don't want to know anything, even though I work there. I'm like, don't tell me about your character. I don't want to know what happens. <laughs> so. That's such a great story. 
Yeah, yeah it's really cool. So. It, re it really does, because when I started watching it, it hooks you from the very beginning. And you go, because I started watching it late, I must admit, hey. uh, after the craze had uh -huh. started. But the minute you start watching it, you're like, I get it. I get it. It's such a story that everybody relates to. Because I have asked several actors, like, what is it that people relate to? There's so many things, whether young, old, there's something for you to connect with. Yeah, there's so many characters. They're so versatile uh, yeah. that, that even if you see these tropes that you always see where it's like, oh, Deku's going to be the scrappy and I'm going to do it and all that, but then he's more complex than that. And, and and people will see that, and maybe you don't like those type of characters, but there's an aspect of them that you root for, or you'll see like, oh, yes. this is the brooding hothead, this is that, but then they get more complex, and you're like, oh, actually, I do like this character mm -hmm. and all that. So there's something for everyone to yeah. kind of glom on to. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that part. Yeah. Well, so what else? Because we, we definitely had to cover the My Hero part, but you've yes. got some amazing characters, and Thank especially, you. and we're going to get to direct later because I love yes. to hear you talk about directing but let's talk acting and characters first okay. oh for sure well I grabbed well, this one. no that's all right you yeah. have a bunch but They're yeah stuck together that's guys. that's LCL from devils apart time propose we eat burgers and fries three times a day until you get paid what is this supersize me you plan to eat a high calorie high cholesterol diet at such a young age I'm looking forward to the next 10 years but now mm -hmm. right there uh, this one's near and dear to my heart it was uh, one of my earliest roles, oh, and really? it's this show has been equated to if you've ever seen the uh, classic Eddie Murphy movie Coming to America. Yes. That yes. people have said this is a lot like it because it is the grander. Uh, we play um, Josh Greeley and myself. Uh, he is the devil. He is Satan, but not I guess not like the in the traditional sense. And I am his demon general, and we get sent to Earth lose all of our powers, and then he has to get a job at a fast food place to make ends meet, because we need to eat, and we need to do that, and I end up being like the housewife, and with the apron, and I make food, and I keep him on task, and I say, don't spend your money, why are you eating junk food, like, why are we buying things, and he's blowing it off, so it's very much like Eddie Murphy it and our like Hall's character, to, yeah, and so, <laughs> so we're doing that, just trying to make ends meet, and we're greater than we should be, but we are not trying to be like, hey, everyone bow down to us, it's like, hey, and we need to go home and we need to do this so <laughs> that's been one of my favorites and fans I've uh, the support for that show we want a season two that was like eight years ago so we're like we're still hoping please make another please season but yeah that one's been and it's a great comedy uh that we've done there so I mean that's one of my favorites okay yeah. let's talk about this Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a lot of kitty. So that's uh, Sakamoto. <laughs> he is from a show called Nichi Joe, Ordinary Life. I don't care who you think you are. That petting was excessive. <laughs> is um, apparently a very beloved uh, manga in Japan. Um, and this one, it's like a bunch of shorts. It's two kind of main stories. There's the cat with his family, which is a five-year-old girl who's a super scientist. She built his scarf to let the cat talk. Mm -hmm. So she builds that, puts it on the cat. The cat starts talking and he's like, all right, here's the deal. You're a little kid. Uh, the little kid built a robot to like be her friend. And the robot looks teenage years, but she's only a year old. And she has this big turnkey on her back. And the, the cat, Sakamoto, is like, all right, listen up. You're a five-year-old. You're technically one years old. In cat years, I'm about 28, so I'm in charge here. And he has to try and keep them under control. Like, he babysits them, but he's also a cat. So he'll be like, as he's trying to lecture them, a fly will come by and he'll start swatting at it. And, uh, and then there's, like, another subsect of where there's these kids at school. So it's, like, their school life, but it's wackiness ensues where the lead character will see like the principal wrestling a deer in the courtyard uh, and eventually like the two worlds merge but that I know a lot of people were waiting for that to get its dub um, and interestingly enough uh, I went to Japan two Novembers ago when we had just finished recording that and we got a tour guide and they asked what I did and my wife and I told them and she goes, oh, well, do I know anything? And I go, okay, do you know, uh, I said, I think it's Nishi Joe. And she goes, yeah. And I go, I'm Sakamoto. And she goes, oh, 
She's like, my whole family, we read that and we do that. She's like, I can't believe that. So it was really cool to be in Japan and they were like excited about it because it's a big deal there. So I really enjoyed really, what a that. What cool experience. Yeah, it was yeah, really neat to kind of, Japan. yeah, to yeah. kind of get that. And, you know, I was seeing advertisements for other shows we were doing and seeing, watching it when it aired in Japan and saying, oh, we're not going to get that episode till tomorrow in America or whatever. <laughs> like, oh, I'm watching it live now. Live so, here. Yeah, it was really we'll cool. Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. <laughs> That's so. awesome. Well, what about some others? You've got so many right here. Well, I've got some really fun stories for a few. So oh, as okay. I say, so, I like good stories or behind the scenes stories. Yes, because I'll because I'll get to like the directing stuff. Yes. I, I got to get these. So okay, I've, you I've, tell. I've been voice acting for about. 15 years. Okay. I started right when I think Funimation got Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, okay. So I was there for Full Metal Alchemist, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I went to school with Caitlin Glass, another oh, yes, voice actor. yes, I so, talked with her. Yeah, so we went to the same college. Oh, wait, okay. Do tell. Okay. Yes, So okay. that's kind of how I got involved, because she got involved there. She got cast as Winry, and then a few months later brought me in to, like, watch, because we used to watch Dragon Ball really? together in college. Okay, so it's coming together because I just talked to her. Yeah. I don't know when these are going to air, like what order, but yeah. I heard her story. So she brought you in? Yeah, so she started doing that, and she okay. brought me in because we were both fans. We used to watch Dragon Ball Z. It was during the Majin Buu arc. Uh -huh. And I would record it on my VCR. On my VCR, which yeah, for those of you younger well, than like flash a picture on yeah, what a VCR, what a VCR looks is. Like. Uh, yeah, it was it was an it was a precursor to DVR or TiVo. TiVo, but, DVD, yeah. But we would uh, go get like Wendy's or McDonald's. We would watch Dragon Ball on Friday, and then we would go to rehearsal for plays or whatever. Yeah. And then you know she brought me in eventually, and. Uh, when she was in the booth, uh, Colleen was directing her and goes, oh, you're an actor as well. She's like, we still need more of those. Do you want to hop in the booth and try that out? And luckily, I've been studying acting. So mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't that I wasn't prepared, but it was like, I've never done voice acting. And wow, I never thought I'd do this. Hopped in the booth. She's like, you have a really good, unique voice. She goes, cool, I'm going to go get you a contract and I'll pay you for these bits you did. And leaves and... and Caitlin goes, I guess you like work here now. You're on the list. <laughs> um, but that kind of, I always bring it back to my love of like Dragon Ball, which is why it's crazy. When I saw you here, I was like, oh, it's least cool. <laughs> like, like I, I still have my little fanboy inside me. So one of my proudest moments is this guy right here. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Beats. He is uh, from the recent uh, Dragon Ball Super movie, Broly, which amazing movie like for well yes I mean amazing yes but did you just kind of that, that kind of brings it around full circle because it, if you started by watching Dragon Ball it, it was insane because Beats uh, is warning potential spoilers for Dragon Ball Super Broly you have been warned. It's like only in the movie and it's funny because he's very noticeable because he's in the first half and he gets shot. That's what this is from. So he gets killed and then they like steal his clothes to put when Broly grows up so you can see like the fanny pack yes. and all that. Yes. And it made me laugh. But that was so cool to be able to work with that. And Chris Sabat directed me. And I, I grew up like loving the end. And I'd known him for a while, but it was still very surreal to say like, you're in the movie and then going to a movie theater and hearing me in a movie theater. I, I was like, I'm in a movie in a theater. People paid and we were sitting next to people who were just like, oh man. And when my character got shot, like spoiler alert, but when he got shot, everyone's like, oh. And I was like, this is so cool. People are reacting to me and listening to me. And this, I grew up watching and the movie was amazing. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah. So bringing it to this was cool. And then I wanted to bring up another character that, uh, this was my first lead that I ever did. And I, maybe some people, people know it, some might not. His name is Jinichiro. He's from a show called Ultimate Otaku Teacher. Since the job is at my alma mater, I'd be comfortable there and probably well liked. Sounds great. But I must refuse. Huh? Weird title, but he is basically a nerd who started teaching school, and he's big into anime. But what I liked about it, with tying it back into Dragon Ball, is that there was a moment where he creates a security system, and it's, it's his voice, but it's like a robot voice coming through that. 
and I asked the director, uh, Kyle Phillips, and I said, hold on. They're like, is there something nerdy we can do here? And I said, if he watches anime, I was like, I want to do something. And I did, uh, you remember in GT, you had your companion, uh, what was it? Giro. Giro. Fine! Gloat about it! See if I care! Would you let it go? So Giru, when we were doing that, I said, I'm going to do like Halt Who Goes There, Giru Giru. And I did that in the in the show because you did? because I and I asked him and he goes, What's that from? And I go, It's from GT. I said, It's really one of the only robots that I really know, but I said, it's it's very familiar. If you know GT, you know some people love it, some people hate it. They're like, you're all like shut up, where it's very much like a smurf, where it's like, what the smurf? Like it's like Giru Giru, and it's like so we but know that's your name. Yes. But I did that, and so I was very proud where it was like, mm, that's my little nerd moment because I, you know, I religiously watched Dragon Ball, so I was like, I'm gonna throw some Gears in there. That's so, so awesome. Yeah, so it was pretty I fun. Love that so you did that. Yeah, so we had some fun stuff, but I but I like that because he was an anime fan in the show. Mm -hmm. So I know Kyle and I found a lot of video game references that we liked and, and a lot of anime and uh, uh, at the time that was uh, Cliff, Clifford Chapin. Oh. He was writing that show. Oh, he was? Yeah, so he wrote that, and we would send him notes, and that's how I first met him, and then he started directing like a year or two later. So it was really cool, because he would laugh, because Cliff's a really big nerd, too, so we would talk about video game references, and he's like, I'm going to put that in there, and all that. <laughs> so it was really neat to kind of see that journey, and now just, I'm a part of it, and like, I'm here, wow. and then with my peers and my heroes, it's just like, oh, no, cool, like, no, no pun intended, my hero con, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, I love listening okay. to everyone and meeting them, and it's like, oh, we're all part of this one family, it you is. know, that it's like, oh, I never got to meet you, but I acted with you, or whatever, yes. so, yeah. That's, what a cool story. Yeah, so, that's kind of like my acting, you know, bits and pieces of my acting mm -hmm. career, because I've, gosh, sometimes I forget, like, was I in that show? I don't know, it's been like 16 years, so I was like, sure, of course I was I in know. that, and you guys, I mean, it's just like, what did I do? What did I say? You remember that one time in that episode? It's like, no. It's no, I hard. Don't. I know it's hard because, when, especially when you do small pieces. I had to look something up earlier because I did a small role on Fairy Tale, and I had to look it up. And it's just because it was so long ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then people don't realize that sometimes you forget where it's like, oh yeah. Yeah. But someone, something you did years ago might be someone just watched it recently. Like that's their first introduction to it. So, so. it's new on their mind, like current. Yeah. Well, we've talked about acting. What great mm -hmm. stories. I love hearing those behind the scenes stories. Oh, yeah. And those little snippets, like the backstories. <laughs> but let's talk about directing. And now knowing where you came from, mm -hmm. that it all started with Caitlin watching Dragon Ball. Yeah. And yeah. everything. So now you're directing, which you yeah. must love I'm, if you have this background. Oh, it. what's, what's funny is that... Coming soon, part two of my conversation with Anthony.